Okay, bit of a headache, but the Bronze Age calls to me, specifically the advancements. Oh my god, whenever I hear people say, ah, no, I know, I, you know, I, I skipped the Bronze Age, it's like, no, you don't. There's too many advancements in the Bronze Age for you to really skip it. Oh, these feathers are in the uh, crafting area, aren't they? Too many advancements, too many top quality advancements, and especially the in uh, weaponry. Oh my god. Too many. Too many. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's see. Hello, bird. Don't mind if I... Oh. Okay. Alright, I've got a decent amount of coal. I can definitely smelt the next batch of whatever I get. Speaking of which, I shouldn't have left. I have to see the exact numbers. How much have I got? I believe it was five bronze, but I could be mistaken. Two. Right. I spent three on the ads. Okay. Uh, then I need more of each. That's fine. Copper is just up there. Let's go grab that. I need the copper. Oh, we got mushrooms, yeah? No, I was mistaken. I must have seen the nubs of that branch. Definitely want that cultivator. Want the at gear. Fermenter. The classics, man. Cannot have the classics. Get things up to quality too, specifically the at gear, and then we can start car sailing. Uh ooh, the axe. Bronze of course, bronze axe. I'm investing in axes and I need all that fine wood, specifically for portals and such. Hello. Oh, no. Alright. Copper should be just north. A little bit north west. Let's see, at this point with my workbench upgraded, I can also upgrade all my troll hides, so if we have any trolls here, that would be just lovely. That would be amazing. Let's start grabbing some thistle too. I feel like you gotta start sometime. At the very least for sausages. Here we are. Woo! -hoo. Mushrooms. Yo. Hello, hello. more copper the merrier just keep going keep going until I'm not quite filled up honestly let's go for 10 and 5 10 copper 5 10 for now oh we could probably do more but maybe we do 15 5 or something like that I'm gonna need just raw copper anyway for certain things, like forge upgrades. So I think 15.5 is a good, is a good get. Yo, just uninterrupted progress. You love to see that. Leveling that pickaxe skill. Although if it was a troll interrupting me, I would not mind at all. I would not mind. Got 12 now. Okay, we're getting there.
Oh, there we go. 15. Exactly. That's excellent. And we should have just enough. Oh, look at this. That is nice. Okay, so we have even more top copper to mine if I need it. I probably will. I usually don't dig deep anymore. Just do top copper and just start sailing them out, you know? Once you get to the midway point and start looking for the merchant, it's like... Now I'm with a carve and now I can just have all this storage. I can just sail to all the good top copper and just have all the convenience in the world in other regards. Don't need to uh, dig all the way down, which is a royal pain in the ass. It's great for like oh, efficiency technically, in terms of just space, but at the time just kind of eh. Oh yes, check that out. Where are you going, sir? Where are you going? Pardon me. Okay. No at gear dot jpeg. It's fine. Sir, you had a tree in front of you? Well, yeah. Uh. Oh. Where did you come from? How interesting. Alright, I'll see if we can't find some tin around here. Should be able to find some down here, right? Oh, we got some great ores too. Ah. Hmm. Okay. Right, Ten wise. What do we got? Do we? Did we? Yeah, I think I mined out all of this tiny riverside. Okay, so I'm gonna have to go like up, up for the tin, which, oh my god, that's a pain. That is a pain. It's an understandable pain, but still pain. Got plenty of minutes unarrested, though. We should be able to get up there. Alright, alright. Ooh. One star. Shame I already got two stars in the bank. Gonna have to drop some of the superfluous stuff. Or superficial. I don't know. I get those two confused. Oh, we're almost there. We're almost there. Run, run, run. Maybe we'll find yet another troll. We have some sort of weather going on. Is it fog? What is this? Rain? Rain. Great door over there. Two of them. Mm -hmm. That's my mistake. There we go. Whew. Oh, another bird. Oh my god. There we go. Alright, this should be Tin City. Oh, we got another troll. We got another troll. Okay, okay. Sir? He's gonna die. I've been hitting him with too many headshots. He's gonna die. Yep. Yeah. 
Oh, inventory a little too full. Not anymore. Okay, where's the tin? There's some. I'm not going to be able to gather as much as I want. I don't think. Oh, I just might. I just might. Okay. Uh, maybe not. Maybe not. Okay. Nope, the troll hide is bogging me down. That's fine. Um, just mark this on the map. You know, it's so interesting, the misconception around bows in Valheim. I think it was on my Silver Age tier list as the two people with just immense misconceptions about bows that got, like, horribly bent out of shape. Either that or they were trolling. And it's like, well, I don't know these people, so I can't just, like, not let trolls do their thing, you know? Or I, I can't let them do their thing, you know? So, uh, they get clapped up. Either way, just, you know, some people would have just, certain channels, certain Valheim communities would have just slapped them up after the first remark. I like to give people some chances, but it is what it is. It's funny shit is this guy went and uh, disliked all my... I don't want to say all my recent videos, because I feel like I would have put more effort in. But he went and uh, disliked the 12 recent videos that are public on my channel. Which is very funny, because dislikes are hidden for most people. You have to put an extension on, a Chrome extension, or whatever, uh, browser extension, to show the dislikes again. And of course, I have that, and I have, it's my channel, so I can see it in the studio, but most people aren't going to know, and then YouTube also has their adjusted, like, algorithmic engagement, which accounts for dislikes now, too. As long as the video is getting engagement, then it is getting potential ad revenue, and YouTube wants to show it to more people. So, all that guy did was boost my algorithm at the cost of zero of my reputation. Which, okay, cool, you know? Very nice. Now I get to say that, it's like, whenever I have, like, a dislike or two, it's like, oh, it's just, it's, it's just those guys, you know? I didn't make a bad video. I didn't make a questionable video. It's just those guys being weirdos again. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. In fact, I think I made some banger videos recently. Personally. Alright. Cooking up all those goods. Let's see. Put that away. This was bones, I think. Yeah, okay, so I'll put that away in the, the uh, crafting area. We also have some leather feathers. Let's put the food away in here, right? Ooh, maybe in here. Here. Yep. And the rest we can put away in the crafting area. I probably should have slept first, but that's fine. Bones, troll hide, it's time to upgrade some shit. Let's do everything but the cape first. I didn't. Upgrade. Oh, I almost upgraded the cape. Oh, I was about to say, like, why is, why is upgrading my pants cost 10 troll hide? Did I make a new one? No, I didn't. Okay. Holy shit. That scared the hell out of me, dude. 
Oh my god. Oh, upgrade. Holy shit, man. Scared the shit out of me, man. Okay, now we have 32 armor, which is nice. That is nice. Let's get our good rest in. Speed up all that production. I'm going to need a shit ton of more wood sometime. Oh my god. I might have to break down some random village somewhere or something. Wood is going to be real easy once I have the portal and I can just grab wood and core wood. Just portal it back, no problem. Soon enough, man. Soon enough. Well, hello. <laughs> Good morning, bird. Pleasant day. No, I can just leave them, leave the gates open for now. There we go. Get these mats. Uh. I do have to get Corwood as well for the for the good old uh, stag breaker too, and the cultivator. Okay. So I'll go grab the tin, and then I'll get some core wood too. Let's do that. I think when I come back, the bees should be ready with four. Okay, so just straight up, get the tin, get the core wood. Let's go. Save a clear for the run back. So I put out a community poll recently, yesterday, uh, yeah, yesterday, I will be uploading this video today, and the poll was all about, do you play games for the story? And there's pretty, pretty much a split between uh, most people saying, yeah, and also, I like all parts of the game. So like story, music... Uh, combat or gameplay, you know, all of that. I like all parts. And maybe I wasn't clear enough on what I meant by playing games for the story. And I think maybe a lot of people are just like not deep enough within games communities to like comprehend how kind of silly playing a game just for the story is don't ever do that by the way don't do that don't ever just play a game just for the story okay unless the game is the story and the gameplay is story elements like people will call them like true the real rpgs where you're role playing and making decisions and that you know you have dialogue trees where you can select which options are good for this and which is good for that I always felt like those were limiting my true role-playing ability, and that I would just play a fucking tabletop if I want to. But, um, a lot of people are fans of those, and I can't, you know, I can't fault them. People like that. People love it. So, it is what it is. But, I can fault people who get absolutely scammed by games which, uh have all these fucking red flags about them, about the gameplay, about, like, combat, about, uh, this and that, and it, they, they don't think that they're gonna also fuck up the story. It's like, how? How? And people just get upset. It's like, you messed up the story, too. It's like, the combat was already trash. Uh, you, we can just watch story recaps or movie cut cutscenes, uh, compilations on YouTube for free for free 
And if it's something more than that, if it's if it's like, oh, I, I know I want like the interaction of the characters and doing this myself, and well, well, that's playing the game. You're not just playing for the story anymore. You are playing the game and enjoying it for it's it being a game. It is more than that now. And so I, you know, I'm just so confused. I'm so confused at that. Like the most recent example, you know, carrying on the classic, you know, Final Fantasy rants that I've been doing lately. Final Fantasy VII remake and rebirth. It's like I didn't know about this interview, but there was an interview in 2015 that said the game would be out in several installments. And if I were to notice that and be a part of the community and see it back then, I would say, okay, it's coming out in several installments. The price surely is going to be split up accordingly between those three installments. The price is going to be one third of each time. No, the price, it's, it's full price. Full price game. That should have already been concerning. That should have been concerning. When uh, price got announced, I feel like people should have been concerned about the state of everything that was going to be on in that game. And uh, I understand people just going on and playing it, you know, playing the game as it is a game for the gameplay. But going on to play that game for the story is, is ridiculous. And there are a lot of JRPG fans who will say... I am a fan of JRPGs because of the story. As if story doesn't exist in every fucking video game genre imaginable. Like, but And some of them will say, Oh, well, it's because of these specific themes. Like the courage and the adventure and, you know, solving these problems and overcoming adversity. It's like, again, that can exist in every single genre of gaming. Why do you play and enjoy JRPGs? Surely not for the stories that people have been uploading in compilations for free for years. Surely you haven't been giving people money for something that you could have been enjoying for free for years now. Surely people have not been that much consumed product. Holy shit. But I don't know. I guess. Maybe. I think this is a good community to sort of levy that, that poll and that question because... Valheim has such an extremely limited narrative, and it's so much raw gameplay, and the adventure on itself speaks a tale that I just, you know, it's like, it's so good. Like, I get to actually see, like, uh, somebody who is, people who are basically uh, a blank slate when it regards to uh, story and gameplay. It's like, I don't know how people would think. I, I you know, I'm not you know, some sort of, like, deep Final Fantasy community yet. Maybe not ever, but we'll see. Um, I love Final Fantasy. I love Final Fantasy for the totality of them. Uh, if a Final Fantasy story was bad, I, if the gameplay slaps, the gameplay slaps. But, considering Final Fantasies have had so many entries that have been banger after banger with good-ass gameplay, music, characterization, story, art, uh, narrative. Like, all of these things have been so good on top of that that, you know, the standards that I have for story are extremely limited. You know, your story has to be fucking good in order to, for me to enjoy. But in order for me to play the game in the first place, that gameplay has got to be spicy. And I have to wait. I gotta wait now because a lot of gameplay, I have somewhat particular tastes and I gotta fucking wait. I can't have games with X, Y, and Z red flags in my library that I wasted money on. No thank you. I gotta be, I gotta be very specific because a lot of people have been putting out games or uh, media uh, surrounding that. That's just like super strange. Uh, you know, long term narrative investments have gone to shit over time. Long-term excellent games have gone to shit over time. I'm talking game-wise, Yu-Gi-Oh! I used to be hella into that. Now the main community can't even diagnose the fucking actual problems with that game. That's how far gone the community is and the game is gone. So it's like, glad I left, bye. 
totally fine with that. People pr bringing back classic formats, okay, well, you only have three or four problems to fix. Go on and fix the problem and make a custom format. Fix the problems. Go on. Go ahead. Fix the issues. We got Max C and Tengu Plant format. I don't care. I don't care if it doesn't do much on the surface. Everybody's running it and it has that impact that it always has. I don't care if the impact is lesser. The raw design is awful. No Maxi. Get rid of fucking Maxi. No Maxi. I own a super rare Maxi from back in the day. I have Maxi. I have. I am biased towards Maxi. I own it. I have sleeved it. It is mine. I'm like, holy shit. It's, you know, this hollow relic of the past. It's, it's cool. I don't care. It is a terrible card that should have never been printed ever. Uh, yeah, no, shit like that where it's like we got brain control in the Edison format and Brianak exists in both formats where, you know, these games, these formats are like six cards custom ban list hit in order to become perfect. Like, for context, in order to make a decent format nowadays, you would have had to hit over 100 cards. Really, truly. For real, to make a flawless format, you would have to hit over 100 cards on the ban list. You would have to be like, nope, you can't play that, you can't play this. Over a hundred times. That's fucked up. That's far gone. Too far gone. Where am I? Uh, here we go. And we got some blueberries too. Excellent. Oh, I can make more Queen's Jam if I want to. Let's put that in there for now. Let's take that. Yoink. And the community not making these custom formats and just following the less flawed but still flawed older formats i'm just like man it's so painful it's so painful but uh yeah there are so many instances oh mushrooms so many instances of these these really strange oddities where uh i i notice like we're getting invested 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 and then like there are cracks in the walls the door opens metaphorically just a crack when we have flaws, whether it be flaws in the game or flaws in the narrative. Narrative wise, we can talk about Walking Dead and Game of Thrones all day long. How those things just fell the fuck apart, okay? And it all started much earlier than we'd like to admit. Much earlier than we'd usually notice. Unless you're a book reader, it started much earlier than you would really notice. And so we have these situations where it's like, oh no, oh, what a disaster. Who could have seen this coming? Oh, we all should have seen it coming. We all should have seen it coming. We really should have. Ah, what a shame. Okay, we have enough core wood now for a cultivator. Let's move this upstairs now. Let's actually keep the deer trophies in here. Let's see. Yeah, there we go. Let's make that cultivator. Okay. Let's grab the core wood. Should just be five and five. Mm, here it is. Excellent. Now we can get our really good food in. Question is, where do I want to put my farm? Also, let's check out the bees. Oh, this, this like bush barely has physics. Uh, no, I can't get on from there. But yeah, after these, uh, all these like famous pieces of media started going way downhill just way downhill and of course you look at like a lot of triple a game releases you can't just automatically go over to a game release and be like well this story that nobody knows if it's good or not i'm just gonna play the game just for that and i'm gonna spend full price for it too and you know i have no sympathy for that i have no sympathy for that where is your brain i've no sympathy. That's ridiculous. What is, what is happening? 
what is happening? Like that is, oh my god, I, I don't comp. It is incomprehensible to me. And uh, what's also really funny is the the one guy who honestly laid out a great deal of criticism towards Seven Remake uh, and its narrative and the characterization that lie within it and the plot and all that. He had a he had a great job doing that but again he he bought the game played it just for the story uh just like no talk about the gameplay and then he didn't like the story so was, you know what was the point of all of that like what what's happened like what's going on not to mention like he enjoyed the rest of the story but there's so much padding in that game and in, in, in rebirth as well that it completely kills the pacing of the narrative too and so he doesn't like he doesn't care for any other aspects of the game for some fucking reason. Other than, like... Okay, like... Maybe, like, music and plot, basically. Music, plot, characterization. Those three things. And I look at that and I'm just... I'm already confused. Because this is a game that he got over multiple installments. He doesn't care about pacing. Uh, somehow. Like, the, I don't understand. Again, I don't get it. And he's going through, and the game he knew and he mentioned was in multiple installments. He knew it was in multiple installments. He knew that. And there was a popular theory that came out at the end of the first game. Because of fucking course there are going to be theories in a multi-part story. It's just like, you know... Reading a book? Have people fucking done that recently? Or even manga? I, I come from a huge variety of little communities here and there that uh, specialize in making theories with a variety of manga because they're ongoing and they're ongoing for fucking ages. And so theory comes naturally. And the theory helps with so much observation and analysis. It is amazing. It is a great deal of fun. People are not pressed. People are not upset when their theories are wrong, okay? That does not happen. I've never seen that happen, ever. What I have seen happen is people come up with amazing theories and sometimes they're right. And then everybody celebrates and has a great time. That's what happens. That is what that is the only thing that happens in, in regards to that. I've never seen people... Uh, get upset that their theory was wrong in these communities. And I've been a part of them for, I've, I feel like, over a decade at this point. Yes, easily. And so I see that, I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, why does this guy who cares about narrative and plot so much, who plays a game just for the story, why is this guy upset that people are theorizing about this game? Like, does, has he read a book in his life? Has he talked with people? Has he had English class ever? And I'm just like, what is happening? What is happening? Like, no joke. This is going to sound fucking hella weeb shit right now. I'm telling you right fucking now, okay? Okay? Listen up. The skills in literature analysis, okay, that I got, not from English class, but by being in these communities, by being in these manga as theorizing communities, all right, helped me out so much with future English class, like in college and shit, that my last English college professor, because I only needed like, ooh, both 30, I only needed like a, a certain amount of English credits for, for the degree, right? So, there was only a certain amount that I needed. And this professor enjoyed my work and my contribution to the class so much that she talked to me about continuing with English. And I said, no, I just need it for the, like, the, this credit. And she was, you could immediately see the look on her face. She was disappointed. She said she wished that I would be able to do more and, you know. English professor was not happy that I wasn't continuing on with literature analysis or literary analysis after that. 
She was not pleased with that whatsoever. And I was like, hey, hey that's, you know, it's, it is what it is. This is just like a thing on the side that I'm interested in that I like doing. And so I'm one of these rare cases. I'm an extremely rare case. So this will be the tool chest, I guess. Uh, we do have more tools in another chest, right? Yes. Let's move that over. I'm a very rare case of somebody who is, who gets just obscenely into both plot and gameplay mechanics of a game. You don't, you don't see that fucking anywhere. It's, it's very rare. It is very rare. Also, somebody who will, who will role play the shit out of uh, their character at a D&D table and then optimize combat as well. Again, you fucking never see that shit. It is... I'm a goddamn unicorn and that's fine. And I don't think I should be that rare. I don't think I should be a unicorn. I should just be uh, a standard standard something, you know. I shouldn't be this, this rare specimen, you know. That's that's weird. That doesn't sound right to me. Let's put Queen's Jam in here. It doesn't seem seem right at all. Not in the slightest. So that's that's fucking odd. But uh, yeah, I mean, there is only so much sympathy I could have for this guy who was who purchased a. $60 game, played it for just one aspect of the game, and then was upset at the direction of that one aspect, even though we knew that there were going to be bad consumer policies already, that the game could be wildly messed up because of who was in charge of working on the game, and that we knew that already. We also knew that... Uh, the gameplay was going to be a little different, it was going to be experimental, and that we might want to wait a little bit to see if we wanted to get it, he didn't do that. And then, she just didn't know about pacing. Doesn't care about pacing at all. Didn't know about uh, theorizing, doesn't care for theorizing at all, which is just like a basic uh, part of any sort of literature community ever, or... Uh, narrative analysis ever ever in multiple multiple sections multiple uh, iterations of books whether it be through many chapters of the same book or whether it be a, a bunch of books in a series or whether it be a different parts uh, split up between any story there is always going to be theorization always always People are going to come up with their own ideas and it's going to be satisfying and it's going to be interesting. It is an important and good mental practice to do. And it is fun. It's fantastic. Oh my god. Yeah. So, I don't understand. Just don't, don't ever, don't, don't, do not, do not, ever, unless a game is the story. Unless the gameplay is the story. If you think that you might not like the game, or you don't know anything about the actual gameplay of, of said game, but you think the story might be interesting, do not pay money for that fucking game. Watch it online for free. People are going to, in absolutely in this day and age, have uh, no commentary walkthroughs and long plays on. On YouTube, yeah, the people are going to stream it on, on, on Twitch. Twitch, people are going to do all sorts of shit that you are going to be plenty interested and immersed in. And if you think, oh, well, maybe I'd, I I want to do it, but I, I wouldn't do it in this way. I want to go in and do it myself in this way. Congratulations, you are interested in that game for the gameplay as well. At which point, you are not playing just for the story. You are playing to play as well. Even if it's doing something menial that doesn't even progress your goals to the maximum, you are still playing the game, and you enjoy it for the game. I mean, people that are just in Valheim, making all sorts of cool builds and shit, they are playing the game. Even though these cool builds aren't progressing them towards any narrative conclusion, even though uh, it's just on the side and... You know, you could argue that there's no progression, no moving forward, no moving the plot at all. 
They are still playing the game. Still playing the game. And so, people who are just, you know, they, they like walking around, being in the, the environment, being immersed in the game, uh, and they can't get that from watching a, a, a YouTube video, congratulations, you enjoy playing the game. It is not just about the story at that point, you enjoy playing the game. And if people understood that distinction, I think the amount of people on the community poll who voted, oh, I, I ha yes, I play for the story, would go down significantly, because no... Most of the time, to get the proper game experience with the narrative in mind, it involves playing the game. And so you are not just playing for the story. You are playing the game. And the game has a good story in it that you enjoy and you might even prioritize over other things in your enjoyment. But you are not just playing for the story in that case. And that That's good. That's good. That makes it almost worth spending uh, whatever fucking money fish to uh, to buy. You know, definitely, I would recommend like getting certain things on sale because I understand there's a sense of FOMO. But in terms of stories and narratives that go off the goddamn rails, which happens a lot, uh, there is also not just okay fear of missing out, but there is glad I stayed away. You remember when people were bitching and moaning, rightfully so, about Game of Thrones Season 8? What were people saying? What were a lot of people saying? I'm, oh, I'm glad I never started. Aha, I never I never started Game of Thrones. Aha, oh, I never I never started Walking Dead. I never started, I never did this, I never got into that. Oh, you guys don't like, uh, uh, oh, I didn't bring my pickaxes. Oh, well, let's go get the Corwood anyway. You know, uh, what is it, uh, Marvel... Marvel like fifth something, the uh, the post Endgame era, where it's kind of gone way down in quality, if I say so. Uh, you're going to have people that say, "Oh well, I never, I never watched those Marvel movies. I, you know, I never, I never got into that stuff." And it's like, well, you know, the natural end uh, post Endgame. It's like I don't, I don't care. You know, once once we had Endgame, you know. I've never watched a single series five thing, and there now I'm doing it right now. I'm doing it right fucking now. I never watched a single series or see whatever it's called, the fifth, whatever post end game thing. I've never seen a single post end game thing, and I'm proud that I stayed the fuck away because they ain't good. They ain't good. They're extremely lacking. Extremely. And so, just as much as you could have missed out on something spectacular. You could have stayed away from a dumpster fire and not had your time and money wasted. Think of that, okay? Think of that. So, I just want to mention this specifically also because I love narratives to death. I love story. I love the music. I love all aspects of games. That's what I would have voted for. I love all aspects. But when we are playing a game, game the game play takes priority it has precedent the game play has priority you know this is why I don't get into uh, a lot of like k-pop ass communities despite enjoying Korean music myself you know I'm part Korean I don't really I don't speak Korean sadly but I am part Korean so it's cool to listen to some of the good shit uh, so, you know, it's a rare, set, unfortunately, to find some good shit, but it's cool to, it's, it, it's nice, I like, I like doing, but I can't get into that community, because the priority now, for a lot of people in that community, is not the music, despite every single other thing in that art piece, or in that art form, in that medium, having the music as its linchpin of existence. Without the music, there wouldn't be the dance, there wouldn't be the visuals, there wouldn't be the, the concept design, there wouldn't be uh, anything else, there wouldn't be the group that formed it, there wouldn't be the personalities behind it, there would be no stand culture, there would be no stand nothing, there wouldn't be any of it, there would be no fan bases, there would be nothing without the actual music. And so the priority should be on the music. 
Is the music good? Then listen to it, then love it, then share it, then do it, squeal about it online. I don't give a shit. If the music is dog shit, do not listen to it, do not support it, do not stream it. It should be about the music because it is about the music. Everything is contingent on the music. And everything, usually, unless the gameplay is the story, everything in games is contingent on the game. If you can't get past a certain area of a game, you can't get past it. You can't enjoy the rest of the story. You can't enjoy the rest of the music. You can't enjoy the rest of the characterization. You can't enjoy the rest of the art because you're stuck on the game. The gameplay is the priority. Everything else is just glorious, fantastic, jaw-dropping, awe-inspiring side notes. Side notes. Side notes that make up people's lives and living, that make up people's communities, that people win awards for in front of national television. All of these things are side notes to the actual gaming and gameplay experience. Because without that, it wouldn't be a fucking game, would it? So which thing should I make next? I'm trying to think. I've got my carrots pl carrots planted. A fermenter? A fermenter would be pretty good too. Bronze Axe? Oh, I have to do Bronze Axe because of the fine wood in the fermenter. Oh man, I have to do that. Look at all these mats that I'm gathering up. Let's put that away in there. Uh, oh, I should have standing torches in here. It's pretty dark. Let's do that. I need to grab some more resin. Okay, let's go put all this fish and like food away. More resin, necktails. Yo, I gotta, I gotta expand and cook some shit up, man. For real. I really gotta do that. But I have a lot of good honey for this uh, fermenter stuff, which is gonna be fantastic. I got a lot of raspberries, blueberries for it too, which is great. Let's put this in here. Do a, a unique fish as well. Yeah, that'll be the fish chest, I suppose. Okay. Let's put these standing torches down just to make things look pretty. Right by the window. Yeah, very nice. Oh, perfect timing. It's just starting to rain. That is glorious timing, y'all. That is a thing of beaut. Beauty. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yes! I love that space behind the chest there. That is glorious. Let's put one here. <gasps> resin. Well, we have a, a small fella outside that's made of resin that wants to say hi. Let's go say hi. Hello, Mr. Resin Lad. Pardon me. You are made of what I need. Thank you. Whee! Ah. You know, I make all these gates and then I constantly try to jump over the walls. Oh well. nice so I'm gonna have fun putting like a forge upgrade right there that's gonna be nice let's put this wooden resin back away welcome to operation bronze axe this is gonna be nice bronze axe well I gotta put some coal in the schmeltus 
And I should uh, put some wood in the kilns too. More tin, yay. Mm, the uh, standing torches are starting to go out. That's fine. I'll let them go out. Let's see. I think I'm just going to grab the wood from here. Oh, I'm one wood short. That's kind of painful. Let's just grab a branch, why not? Bird. Ah, oh, I went way too close. I should have done a jump shot. Okay. Oh. Redemption. No. I need another jump shot, don't I? Oh, yeah, I need a jump shot. Oh, so close. That could have also been a fine one about fucking me over. Ah, come on, get up. There you are. Oh, that was definitely the fine one about fucking me over, dude. Again. Again. Can this fine one about shit fucking stop? There we go, finally. Oh my god. Man, that Arbalest is going to be so good in Ashlands, probably. Holy shit. If they're going to be weak spots in the future that are very precise. Woo! Arbalest, man. That's going to be the spice. I kind of rhymed unintentionally there. It is what it is. Spice precise. Yeah, that's what I'm Mmm. I love the, the added sheen to things when when it's raining, things are wet like that. Oh, it looks so good. I wish there was some sort of polish that we could have. That would look so nice. Like a waxing, maybe something to do with resin. I don't know, man. Beeswax. Maybe if there was a beeswax, that could work as well. Let me know what you guys think about that. Okay, 5 and 10. That's more than enough for the Bronze Axe in terms of tin. But, okay, I have 2. I'm going to need how much more? Hope that fish is on land. Oh, not anymore. Um, I have 5 here. I'm going to need 6 more, which means I need 12. I have 5, which means I need 7 more copper. That's an easy run. That is a very easy run. But I'm going to need more wood to follow up. So let's get exactly seven copper. And then we'll also just collect a whole ton of uh, core wooden wood in the process. Because we're going to need all that. Can I sleep? Yes. You know, it's really funny. I'm going to mentioned something that I said earlier uh, one of the JRPG community fans he said uh, in his video where he basically pretended like only JRPGs have like good narratives with those types of themes in it story wise I was just like that's that's absurd that is ridiculous uh, he also said you know you you shouldn't be ashamed to like JRPGs. You shouldn't be ashamed to be a part of this community. And then he says, 
the equivalent of oh no guys only jrpgs have stories with the, this type of you know overcoming adversity and like having this saving the world like party with adventure and it's just like oh my god you've immediately made me embarrassed to be in part of this community right, right after you said you shouldn't be embarrassed you're like by the way, here's something embarrassing about this community. Oh my god, what a disaster. What an absolute disaster. So funny, dude, so funny. Very tragic, though, because I... It's like, I still love when, you know, JMPGs are, that are rightfully uh, worthy of appreciation get appreciated. I like that, you know? Because I love certain JRPGs. And then there's also, like, there's a Lost Sphere, which I've been meaning to get into. Because it's, you know, a JRPG you put out in 2018 that has ATB system. But also you ca you have AoEs, and you can customly move around your characters. And it's like, oh my god, the tactics. The, the, the strategy, the analysis. It's like, holy fuck. It sounds so good, but No Rest for the Wicked is coming out in now... A week from today. And I'm like, ah, The rest of the wicked is going to be so good. I went too far. I have to go. Go in. Yeah, no rest for the wicked. Oh my god. I'm waiting for that one. That one's going to be fire. I'm going to be deep into that. I'm probably going to wait a day to see if there are any specific reviews on certain things. It is early access, but if the devs are steadfast into some really ridiculous things and that are hyper red flags that we just don't know about yet, then it's just smart to wait. It's like, uh, it's Moon Studios. They make bangers. They, oh, I forgot my pickaxes. <gasps> Time to chop wood. It is Moon Studios and they do have a great reputation, right? They do seem like they know what's going on with game development, even though they're trying out this new genre uh, to them, you know? So, the odds of them getting it right are very high. But I still have to wait. I still have to wait. Uh, you know, I'll just give it, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll give it a day. I'll give it a day. It's a burial chamber here. I don't think... Have I been in this one? I don't think I have. The moment of truth will come with skeletons? No, I guess I'll have to go inside. Have I been in here? No. This is a new chamber. Uh, I could do this now. Let's do this now. Why not? Like, what else am I doing now? I can't mine. I forgot my... Ah! I forgot my pickaxe. Why, why, why you juking bastard? Come here. Okay, we have two open areas, one closed area. Oh, that is an open fucking area. Um, this is a closed area. Okay, let's do the open area. Closed. Now we can go off to the other side. Oh, hi, hello! You don't really see me yet. Yo, check the damage. Check the damage! Holy shit! No RR trophy, which is sad. Ah! There must be a bone pile. No! Mmm, look at these cores. Very nice. Give me that. Ooh, flint head arrows. Good for trolls. I want that. Take all the valuables, too. Very spicy, y'all. Very spicy already. Okay, now I just have to look for doors. We got nothing here. Another core. Hey, that's a, that's an additional five, is it not? Yeah. That is nice. I think we'll save some of these for portals now. 
So if I get like six or eight or something divisible by two, that'll be portal stock. If I happen to get an absurd amount, then you know, we can up production then. You know what I'm saying? I don't see anything. Oh, hello. I have 32 armor, sorry. We got a skeleton here. Yep. Hey, I forgot to upgrade my... No, no, I didn't. I didn't forget. That's why I did like 70 damage. Oh, boy. Yeah, that's a beast. Sneak attack plus weak. Mm-mm-mm. Okay, so now we have this door. What do we got? Nothing. Alright. Okay. Okay. Did that. So now we just have the last room. Not seeing anything. Open area? Nothing. Can we get big spice behind this door, please? Come on. Okay, can we get big spice behind this door, please? Can we get big spice behind this door, please? Maybe a larger room that expand, expands off to other things. Ah, it's a dead end. That sucks. Okay, well, we got five cores. That's fine, I suppose. I could also set up a ward with one core and then save the other two for a portal pair. That would be pretty wise. I think that would be pretty wise. Hey, get me out of here. Stop. Let me out. Let me out. Let me out. Do not fucking soft lock me, game. <gasps> I see, I see, I see. I'm free! Okay. Fucking A. Weird ass burial chamber. Strange stump. Very odd. Ah, more carrot seeds. This will be like a little seed bank. Just in case a shaman destroys it or something. I'll have some seeds to restart the old carrot. And if not, if, if my seed bank gets too large, then I can feed them to birds later on. Birds meaning my chickens. Mushrooms. Alright, seriously though, I need wood. I need to fill up the rest of my weight capacity with wood and head back because I'm lacking in lumber. Ooh, I do have a cultivator, so I should plant a bunch of these pine cones and such around the base. Oh, no, I should... No. It should, uh, it should be oak, first and foremost. Let's drop the resin. Oak trees make a really good, like, strangely effective raid defense as part of the outside of your base. Strangely effective. Very weird how that functions. I need the eye. I, I have so much deer meat. But yeah, being able to have these large trees to just pin enemies against and just do sentinel threats with taking advantage of your, your good old strong knockback attacks like uh, Frostner and such. You flank an enemy and then just smack them against an oak tree. It's like they're not going anywhere. At which point you can just smack the shit out of them with a Frostner. Not worry about the knockback at all. Just get your free DPS and control. Oh, you're styling. So that's satisfying too. Back when... Uh, oh no, you can you can do make good use of this with like one-handed sword too. Because one-handed swords have cleave. And you just don't care about smacking trees. Like that's pretty good too. trying to think of something else we've hit 50 regular wood and also the inventory is filling up I have, a, I have a ton of deer hide all right that's it I'm good I'm good let's drop a marker for wood head on back this time I gotta get my pickaxes
How are my stats? Axe is 29 still. What about clubs? Clubs almost 31. They're balancing themselves out, especially with bows as well. I mean, Ad Gear's, or, well, technically the polearm stat is going to balance itself out even more, but we'll have to see. Like, I don't want to have axes too high because they're going to invest themselves naturally once I get into the swamps and start fighting leeches and A-bombs and shit. Specifically A-bombs. But leeches, I mean, the axes with the diagonal hitbox, that's going to be good. That's going to be nice for them. Easy leech kills, even when they're all grouped up. Much more convenient than just slamming with the sledge and aggroing everything within a certain giant radius. Wee. Uh, wood. I can keep that in here. Let's see. Ooh, yeah, I got quite a bit now. Let's put this extra wood over here. No, I can put this extra wood upstairs. Yes. Bones we can put up there too. We got all this coal. Check that out. Now we have a coal surplus from investing into the smelters. Investing? Inputting. Investing. Why would I? Whatever. So this is a weird word choice. Alright, I got a shit ton of yellow mushrooms and such. As per usual with these types of dungeons. Damn, I got a lot of yellow mushrooms. What the hell? Dude. Uh, valuables. Let's keep it going there. We've got, uh, yeah, I got stuff there. Seeds. Uh, we can put this in here. I'm not going to make the ward just yet. I'm not going to spend my fine wood on that. Okay. Tool chest. Here we go. Should be able to sleep. Ah, I got a nice chai that I brewed up myself. Mm -mm -mm. Homemade chais in like very western style packets. You know, tea bags and shit. You have to brew it strong in order to get the proper chai taste. If you grew up with chai, you fucking know. Um, you know. It has to be strong. And a lot of times, it ain't strong. It's very subtle. And I like subtle. I, li I do like subtle with my spices sometimes. But I kind of like it when chais blow my head off a little bit. It's just satisfying in the morning. So... I brew my chai strong as hell. Check out these mushrooms, yo. And yeah, I got all that good. It is nice. Yo, what the... Come back here, piggy. Uh, two whiffs. Shout out to when people were theory crafting that uh, it might be good to send out the first two attacks of any combos in order to hit uh, the mob in front of you with the third. It's just like that is so unnecessary. Just You can just play well other ways and save on your time and stamina. It's like that, It is such a limited form of interceptive play where it's like, well, the enemy isn't going to necessarily attack at that time. And you have to be prepared. And not just necessarily with parrying, but also maybe even, you know, at gear middle mouse. Maybe with proactive control, we can just run up at the enemies and dominate them ahead of time. So that we can absolutely control and decimate whatever encounter that we're in. That would be pretty good. That'd be, that, that would be pretty nice. And then it's like, oh, actually, you know, proactive control is even better than uh, being passive 99% of the time. Who would have known? I did. I knew. I knew because of Champions Return to Arms and Champions of Norath. 
there's so much proactive control in those games that it's like just like on principle it's just good and uh it just permeates throughout games with combat systems if you can be proactive and control the enemy what else is there to need you know you know, slap on some decent damage on top of that. It doesn't even have to be like the best damage. It's the best effective damage because the enemy can't do shit. Yo, look at all these mushrooms, yo. What the hell's going on? Are these blueberries already? Oh, dude. That is nice. 15 mushrooms from this little adventure so far. Hell yeah. Alright, seven copper. There's more than seven copper here. Absolutely. Let's go get that. Might as well chop that log down. Get the rest of my inventory with wood as I said I would. Wood, wood. A mm. oh, one star. Good old quick reaction parry. Get that additional damage in. Love it. I love it a lot. Certain enemies you can just sneak in, hit to hit to hit. And then just if you hold down block and release attack at the right moment, you'll parry them. And it's just really good to get your damage in, potentially stagger locking certain enemies uh, with your parry. Uh, or just like getting a, uh, a a two cycle in where you smack them one time and dominate. And then you parry once and then you dominate again. And that kills the enemy. So, axes versus abominations. This is a classic example. Just because axes are s just slightly s slower than uh, swords. You have to be very delicate with your timing. And being able to hold down uh, block during the attack animation. Because it won't cancel your, your attack. Being able to hold that down and just let go. So good. That's so good. There are... Oh no, it won't cancel your attack, but it will cancel the ending frames of the animation. So, there, on the uh, Valheim wiki... Again, I'm about to drop some additional issues with Valheim Wiki. There are uh, stats under attack speed that tells you how much time an attack takes. And it's the entire animation time and not the earliest time where the hitbox appears. So when you see like 2.x seconds or 3. Point seconds for an attack, do note that it is like attacking and then not canceling the attack. So it's like this. You see, all of the time that it took for my character to reach the neutral position again is calculated into that time. But, of course, if we just click and hold, that neutral position is canceled by the animation of the next attack. As soon as the attack's over, in, in earnest, the actual attack, and all the hitbox is gone, we can then cancel that with the next animation, or roll, or parry, or block, or anything else, basically. We can jump, you can cancel it with basically fucking anything. And that's great. Like, that's 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 classic, that's smooth. Of course, we don't want to wait, you know, that would kill immersion, and that would be a horrible feeling. So, classic, basic stuff. They don't get too much props for that, because it's so basic. But... I don't understand why the wiki has the whole animation time on. It does not make any sense. Like still, the the amount of time that it'll take to get back to your neutral position is going to be just about the same anyway. See that? It's, it's, it's the same. But the difference in all of these attacks, the difference in the speeds of the actual attack instead of the getting back to neutral uh, animation, that's what's going to also be calculated into the attack difference. And you can still uh, correctly judge them 
based off of the amount of speed relative to each other listed on the wiki and say, this is faster than that, this is faster than that, because the return to neutral position is going to be the same. Wait a second. Maybe it's slower on the X. It's faster on the club than the X. The X even has a slower getting back to neutral position on it. Oh my god. Why did they do the X that dirty? I mean, it's irrelevant because you can just cancel it out and, you know... You can still see that the axe animation with all the cancels is slower regardless, but it's like, really? 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 Why is it got to... Oh my... What? Yeah, you can still cancel that out with a bunch of shit. Yeah. Okay. A skeleton. Oh, pardon me. I'm using the axe, so I should not be. That's so weird. That's so weird, dude. It doesn't mean anything, but it's just so weird still. <laughs> it's very funny. Holy shit. We're in mushroom land, man. 18 mushrooms on this journey? That is something. Oh, man, I am taking, like, all sorts of roundabouts. My cardinal directions are all messed up. We are back at the base, though. Hell yeah. I love this waterside setup. Oh, I wonder how the base looks from that island. Yo. I think I mentioned it before, but I gotta put, like, a lighthouse or something over there. Oh, it's going to look so nice. Or maybe I decided a lighthouse over there. Ah, oh, the islands in this little area are so sick. Oh, man. Maybe I should make a bunch of towers. Yo, that would be so cool. That would be so sick. Yes, it would be more efficient to spread out that ore throughout multiple different smelters, but uh, I gotta sort a bunch of shit anyway. It's fine. Let's put this in here. Oh man, I got a bunch of stuff. Uh, bones can go in here too. Raspberries. Okay. So many mushrooms. Let's organize this a little bit. That's better. Thistle. Dandelions are here. Resin. Uh, blueberries. Down here. Right? Yes. Repair the goods. Eat the goods. Full risk came out. Nice. Ah, uh, I should make some arrows. I wish I could just disable club from crafting for a while. And then maybe there'd be a GUI where you could re-enable that. That would be so nice. I do not want to accidentally make a club. And while that hasn't happened yet, I feel like it's just a matter of time. 
Let's check on the uh, honey. I feel like we've had a few days. Oh, not quite. Almost there. Yeah, all these little islands, man. Oh, should I make like, should I make like giant bridges? What do you guys think about big ass bridges? Maybe I should save that for the Iron Age and the stone. Yeah, I won't do that now. That'll be a later project. But I should clear these trees to get that view. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That'll be a project once I have the bronze axe. That'll be something for next episode. 218 feathers. <laughs> 10, that's uh, 5. Oh my god. Two more. Come on. Come on. Parkour. Let's do a level review. 30. 30. Almost 30. Run 45 already is nice. Jump 34, of course, right? Woodcutting 40 is pretty spicy already. I don't usually have that much, but I've been building a little bit more, so that's cool. Hey, it's ready. Oh, I'm doing too much. Okay, tin away. Here we go. Oh, I want to make that accurate so bad. Bronze axe. Let's go. Sure, it's going to have like a little bit less durability, but that is okay. That is okay. Let's put this back. I got just the chest for this flint axe. Just the one. Okay, with that, we've got 1729. All right, we are cooking now. We're going to have all the fine wood in the world. Mm, and that's going to be next episode. Thank you much for watching. If you enjoyed and you watched it this long, do go ahead. You know, I, I don't usually say this, but I think it would be funny. Go ahead and give me a give me give, give me you know, give me a like on the video because chances are. That good old troll might be watching and arbitrarily giving all my videos a dislike, so... If you just like the shit out of this video, I think that would be hilarious. For nothing else than to piss off some random guy, like the video. Thank you much for watching, and next episode we are getting hella fine wood, making portals, getting all sorts of mining done, and it's going to be a fun time. Thank you much for watching, I'll see you guys some other time. Bye!